hi everyone. March 28, 2019. I just got a comment from a subscriber to tell me to look at the east. Look at the east coast. Yep. Okay. Well, I posted a video earlier and none of this, none of this was happening. So, things change. A flip of a switch. Change those frequencies. And boom, you got a very colorful radar site. Microwaves. Along the uh, coast of South Carolina. Massive, intense frequencies. North Carolina, South Carolina, and radar, Doppler radar, pulsing away. Okay, interesting because once I posted that last video, I can't tell you how incredibly depressed I was. I couldn't get, I couldn't get out of it. I hate it. And I'm in so much physical pain right now. And I am really struggling. Oh, just numerous symptoms and No, I didn't even think to come over here, which I usually do. When I start having a burning pain, the back of my uh, give my shoulder blades down my shoulders. I usually think, go to this site. Let's just check out what's happening with our fabulous frequencies that they're overloading us with. Now, do remember, or always keep in mind, this, what you are seeing, <clears throat> is on top of on top of Wi-Fi, smart meters, cell phones, cell towers, Gwen towers that are positioned in many towns or uh, have been put up in many towns, it's on top of the saturation that we experience 24-7. So, when you see all of these frequencies now, that, that only, it just magnifies everything. I, oh, man, well, I did get a, comment from someone, short, very concise. I am sensitive to the frequencies. It's not fun. Yeah, this is not fun at all. And I was just putting some articles together to do a video and I kept thinking, am I going to be able to do this video? The exhaustion also that hits is really hard. And this has been happening more frequently with me. Dizziness, far more frequent. I know my neighbor has Wi-Fi. And so I'm sitting in Wi-Fi. And the smart meters here are really... I just... Yeah, this is getting very, very difficult to manage. Um, the video that I was putting together has to do with the Oroville Dam. Now, I posted a video yesterday 
about the Oroville Dam. And I want to read just a little bit more of the article that I was working on yesterday. According to National Dam expert Scott Cahill of Watershed Services of Ohio, or Oroville Dam is on the same failure track as in 2017, with visible water seepage trickling from the foot of the dam and dozens of points along the dam's principal spillway. Cahill warns that warming temperatures magnified by precipitation is a growing threat to the dam. Okay, I also want to point out what I didn't read in yesterday's video. On March 14, Sacramento Superior Court ordered discovery. The judge, James McFetridge, ordered discovery to begin in a lawsuit against the state for hundreds of millions in damages by the city of Oroville, dozens of farmers, businesses, and others during the two-month crisis in 2017 when the spillway just uh, collapsed. Um, plaintiff's motion included wide-ranging allegations of dam employees suffering from sexual and racial harassment, extensive theft of equipment by dam officials, filing fraudulent financial reports, shoddy maintenance records, and a pattern of activity destroying evidence to conceal liability and criminal actions. Okay, so what do we have now? California Department of Water Resources is being forced by looming El Nino uh, rainstorms to open the uncompleted Oroville Dam main spillway next week. Wow. Okay. Um, but don't worry, because they issued public reassurances, oh wait, on February 21, that the uncompleted repairs at the Oroville Dam weren't a problem, since the Department of Water Resources did not expect the reservoir water level to rise enough to use the spillway anytime soon. Guess what? They've announced they're using the spillway. El Nino lasts through the summer. The Why don't we get back to what's that FEMA had denied California's request for 360, 306 million disaster relief reimbursement for the Oroville Dam spillway failure. We'll get back to that, but listen to this. Debbie, you can see the newly constructed spillway just behind me in the distance. And yes, I spoke with people to get their reactions, and some are concerned, but others are hopeful. The maximum capacity of the Oroville Reservoir is 900 feet. The current water level is at 845 feet. And the projected elevation due to expected storms will rise 5 feet by April 5th. So DWR is preparing and closely monitoring those levels. Concerned neighbor Wayne Smith watched the spillway overflow back in 2017 from the window of his home. Smith said his biggest concern is what he thinks is keeping the community in the dark. I'm hoping they're they're telling us what they really did and what they're really doing. Um, and uh, I know there has been concern about them blasting here on the face of the dam. And I know I, I think that's just for looks and for smoothing everything out. But you hope they know what they're doing. Earlier this month, the DWR explained their confidence in the new structure. It's thicker, it has more concrete, and was built to handle flows as needed to manage lake levels and provide flood protection. The DWR plans to notify the public before actually utilizing the spillway. And Erin Mellon with DWR Public Affairs said they should have a better idea of where things will land at the end of the week. Okay, so the notification that you'll get is anywhere from 24 to 72 hours. But clearly, you have uh, Americans who, well, 
They're not too trusting. They're not too trusting anymore. Oh, I hope they know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, Wayne. I certainly hope that they know what they're doing as well. But how can you trust the Department of Water Resources when they have known? They have known about certain um, problems with the dam that needed repair, and they never did it. So Trump administration on February 28th denied California's request for $306 million, um, disaster relief reimbursement for what took place in 2017. Ineligible. FEMA determined ineligible for Oroville Dam National Disaster Reimbursement due to its subject matter expert blaming leakage through cracks and joints of the gated spillway causing high drain outflows that have been observed for 50 years. Management deficiencies over five decades included a lack of modification of design and repeated ineffective and possibly detrimental repairs. They, uh, Department of Water Resources estimated $260 million at first. The cost ballooned to $1.1 billion in early March 2019. Despite a multitude of unbid change orders, unbid meaning they were just handing out uh, contracts, no bid contracts. I'm not sure what unbid change orders are, but continuous water seepage is visibly trickling from the foot and dozens of points on Upper Dam's main spillway. Um, and then the Department of Water Resources inexplicably announced construction blasting. And look, they did say uh, they had no intention of uh, using the main spillway to manage lake levels. And this was back in um, I, I believe, yeah, February, February 21. Elevation, the, the water was at 773 feet. Now it's at 845. And you're looking at snow melting, storms coming, El Nino, and the dam has not been repaired. The blasting, they announced March 22nd. March 22nd, we're going to be blasting. But they don't say why. And now they're going to be testing the spillway. Okay, I'm posting this because I do have subscribers who live in this area, but subscribers who are right smack there. And if anything happens, their homes could very well be destroyed. So, please, everybody there, well, you need to prepare. Construction blasting around Oroville Dam, Paul Preston, and a group of concerned residents living in the downstream floodplain filed for an injunction at the Butte County Courthouse to prevent vibrations from blasting causing the earthen dam's hydrated soil to become liquefied and cause a catastrophic failure. So with two big rainstorms moving in this week, after 10 inches of rainfall the last four weeks, 
Well, what have they said, uh, Department of Water Resources? Main spillway and the emergency spillway are reconstructed and able to handle flows as needed to manage lake levels and provide flood protection for the surrounding communities. As a precaution, they're installing temporary cameras and lights along the Oroville Dam's main spillway for observational purposes when water begins to flow down the chute. Okie dokie. Well, I don't trust any government agency, not with everything that we know, not with uh, everything that we know <laughs> regarding the, the use of weather as a weapon, Agenda 2030, moving people out of areas, and we have seen over and over and over again a failure of government to act. So, what else do we have? We've got a dam in western South Dakota expected to fail. Tuesday, a small hole in the Quinn Dam is growing and now measures about three feet by four feet. Sixty residents in the small town of Quinn could be cut off, but there are no evacuations. Officials are confident culverts in the floodplain can handle the outflow and no structures currently are in danger. Flash flooding is expected to begin shortly, especially, especially if the dam fails. This was today, or yesterday, I'm sorry. Rapid City, uh, South Dakota, <laughs> counties, southwestern, um, Haken County, Northwestern Jackson, East Central, Pennington County. Some uh, locations will experience flooding, including Quinn and Cottonwood, and uh, locations along Cottonwood Creek. People in these areas need to be aware, and if necessary, move to higher ground. Okay, well, it wasn't just me, but many people said, you know, at the beginning of 2019, you can expect all agendas to ramp up, accelerate, and we will be seeing kind of incomprehensible, overwhelming destruction take place. Record-breaking floods force evacuations on South Dakota Reservation. South Dakota. Everybody is afraid that their livelihoods are going to be swept up by the water. It is critically, it, it's, it's really a critical time for the livestock folks because right now their cattle are calving, flooding swamped roads, trapped people in homes, cut off water supplies to thousands. A lot of people lost their homes. Spring storm that is bringing rain and snow may lead to additional flooding as the runoff flows into rivers and streams already swollen with snow melt. Rain is expected to prolong the flood fight along the swollen Missouri River, creating a second crest east of Kansas City. Flooding prompts criticism of way Missouri River dams row, run. You know, yeah, yeah already, already, a whole lot of people who live near the Missouri River believe the Corps, Army Corps of Engineers, isn't doing enough to prevent floods or is placing too much emphasis on other priorities such as protecting endangered species and preserving barge traffic. The flooding that is going on right now, this happens so often where people in communities are, what the hell is the Army Corps of Engineers doing? 
Well, Republican United States Senate Josh Hawley of Missouri said Corps officials told them, told them last week they treat all eight priorities for the river equally. But you have a major crisis, right? You've got that bomb cyclone dropping an awful lot of water and you're not going to maybe hold off on saving the endangered species to give your time and attention to managing the dams, the levees, you know, uh, when a flood is going on. Well, Holly uh, said, you've got to be kidding me. Flood control is not our top priority. It is not, period. That's what he was told, point blank. Flood control, not our top priority. And Hawley thinks that the Army Corps of Engineers should be taken out of the Department of Defense and put into another agency. Yeah, I think they should be taken out of the War Department. The Corps manages the Missouri River system of dams and locks and decides when and how much water is released from reservoirs, which they did twice. Which they did twice. Which certainly contributed to the flooding. The severe flooding this month in Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, Missouri. New criticisms for the Corps' management of the river. 400 farmers, landowners, business operators sued the Corps after the historic 2011 floods and won. The attorney for the law's lawsuit, the attorney for the plaintiffs, said those management practices are still in place, contributing to the flooding this month. What management practices? Um, he said the Corps stores more water in six upper Missouri River basins than it needs to and has also modified structures like dikes. The river itself is changed. It spreads out and it doesn't flow like it used to flow. It's like a sluggish drain. It backs up. That's been going on since for a very long time. And they won their lawsuit with the, uh, against the Army Corps of Engineers and their management of the flood in 2011. And they didn't change a thing. So now look at the flooding happening again. Dam failure to the north sent a surge of additional water into the river, worsening an already bad situation. Another dam failure. Holt County, Missouri, 460 homes were damaged when the flood reached a foot above the 2011 record and most are still underwater. They told us after the flood of uh, 2011, if you build up and elevate above this certain level, it will never happen again. So, so this resident did it, but it still wasn't high enough. So I don't know what the answer is. It's getting pretty expensive. Core management since 2004 has changed. And the change partly to protect endangered species, including the pallid sturgeon, a seldom seen bottom feeding fish. You really think that the Army Corps of Engineers cares about that sturgeon? This is all deliberate, guys, to create the flooding that you are experiencing. 2004 was the turning point when the Corps started managing the river for recreation and wildlife. Used to be at the top of the list, flooding, flood control, 
first place. Navigation, second place. And those two things move to the bottom of the list. Now it's endangered species. And ever since that happened, we've been flooded out regularly. Flooded out regularly. And we're going to get hit again this spring. That's what he said. All of our levees are destroyed. They've just been destroyed. We have no protection from the high river now or spring rains. We're sitting there exposed. You cannot ever trust any of these agencies, whether it is within the federal government or, unfortunately, state government. They are wanting to destroy Americans, destroy their homes, their livelihood. They want you out of those places. Please take everything that is going on very seriously. If you can move, move out of areas that are going to be hit hard. Not everybody can move. So, yeah, sitting ducks and Yeah, I hope to God nothing happens, guys. All of you in the Oroville area. My thoughts are definitely with you. You can count on that. You can trust that. All links are below.